What's going on folks and welcome to Stu's Garage. Uh, today on the video we're going to be discussing installing a Canton AccuSump. What I have here is the 2 liter AccuSump cylinder and um, basically what this system is designed to do is to supplement your engine oil pressure um, in times where your oil pressure might run low like in a corner or things like that and uh, basically to help save your engine from situations like what possibly led to the demise of my engine. The reason why I'm making this video, there's plenty of AccuSump installation videos online right now. The reason I'm making this video is because um, even though it is a very simple install, a lot of those videos even further oversimplify the process and leave out a lot of uh, important small details which are small but necessary in getting this thing done and they basically leave more questions unanswered and you can't really get the install done. So I'm going to go through this install step by step. I'm going to tell you guys how this thing works and um, we're not going to actually get to demonstrate it because I still have no engine but even with no engine we're still going to be able to get this install done and it'll be there when my motor finally comes back one of these days. All right, so right here we've basically got a diagram of how the AccuSemp system works. Um, we have your canister here, we have our 10 AN lines, we have our valve here. Um, this is the oil cooler, which we'll explain in just a minute. This spidery looking thing here is your engine, and these are the supply and return lines for your oil cooler. So basically what you have is you've got one line running from your AccuSemp to a valve. Uh, the valve can be remote, as I've shown you here. It can be um, directly attached to your cylinder, or you can actually use an electronic valve, which I'll tell you a little bit about later on. Um, so you come straight from here, um, you splice into the return line for your um, oil cooler, and that's pretty much it. The system uh, maintains its pressure based on what you set the pressure as on here. So with that brief understanding, um, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the installation for this. All right, so we're gonna go over the parts that you're gonna need for your AccuSump installation. Uh, first off, you're gonna need your AccuSump accumulator. Uh, other brands make this, but this is from AccuSump, so I went ahead and wrapped this one in carbon fiber. The one from AccuSump um, from Canton actually comes in blue. I just wrapped it in carbon fiber. Um, your accumulator should come with a pressure valve, a Schrader valve where you're going to actually fill it with air to uh, create your pressure and um, a pressure release valve and this is for an emergency situation if this became overpressured for whatever reason it shouldn't ever become overpressured. Um, the inlet to the canister there's a hole here and that is a one half inch NPT thread. Now what I've done is I've put an adapter in here that goes from one half inch NPT which is the threads that you cannot see and it goes to a 5 eighths flare end, um, which is equivalent to a dash 10 AN. Now normally what you would do is you would put your valve directly into the AccuSump like so, but I'm doing mine a little bit different. I'll explain this to you in a minute. Um, but what this is gonna allow me to do is to put my ball valve at a different location because this is not really gonna be stored in a place where I can easily reach it. So I'm gonna run my valve in a separate location. So we're coming out of here at dash 10, which is also 5 eighths. We have 10 feet of dash 10 hose here. Um, I already started putting one of the AN fittings on here, so that's why you see one of the mismatch here. So you're gonna need various AN fittings depending on your build. Um, you know, just write it out on paper and just see what you're gonna need to connect where. And you can kind of decide based on what you see here today. Um, next up, I have two different T valves. Uh, this one was given to me by Thomas. Uh, shout out to you, Thomas. Appreciate you very much. This one has a check valve in it, and that's why I grabbed this one from him. Uh, this one does not. So you can run this system with or without the check valve. Um, obviously, Canton recommends that you're going to run it with the check valve. Um, now, right here, what we have is the ball valve. Um, you can buy the ball valve from Canton, which comes with a one-half NPT on this side, like I was saying. It actually inserts into that hole there, and that's where the valve lives. Um, we're gonna be placing the valve in another location. So what I actually did is bought a ball valve that has um, one half inch NPT female on both ends. 
and I put the same adapter that I used here that goes from one half NPT to five eighths flare in. That's why they call it a flare in because it attaches just like an AN fitting. And so that essentially gives me a dash 10 AN ball valve. And this unit here as it sits probably cost me about $15. If you go on Summit and try to buy a Dash 10 ball valve, those things are like $350. So, um, I really made out there. So, these are pretty much the supplies you're going to need to get your Canton AccuSump installed. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get started on the install now. Alright, so there was your brief rundown on the parts list. Uh, there's two parts that I left out. One, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, was the electronic valve. Um, you can use your electronic valve in place of the manual valve. That would be useful if you have your AccuSump in a location that's not accessible. Some people do put their AccuSump systems in the engine bay or in their trunk or some other place where you can't physically reach a valve or it's just more convenient to have it actuated by a switch or ignition. Um, I chose to go the manual valve route just because that was recommended to me based on other people's experiences. And uh, for the sake of simplicity, less points of failure, you literally, you just turn it on and off with your hand. Um, the only drawback with the manual valve is you physically have to remember to shut the thing off before you turn your car off. Otherwise, it's gonna push all that oil into your oil pan um, when you turn your car off and your oil pressure drops to zero, like it's designed to do. But you don't want that to be happening when your uh, car is turned off. So you just have to remember to turn off the uh, oil valve. Um, the other part that we didn't discuss that you will need is a oil sandwich plate, depending on your setup, um, an oil filter sandwich plate. And uh, you're gonna have to figure out what sandwich plate you need for your application. Um, in order to help you figure out what that is or which one you need, you may wanna look into um, parts that you'll need to do an oil cooler kit because it's basically going to do the same thing. So what that's going to do is that's going to give you an inlet and an outlet from your oil filter. Um, and that's where you're going to be able to splice the Canton uh, AccuSump into. So I don't need a sandwich plate here on my engine because the LS actually has provisions built in for a um, oil pump. So all I have to do is use that. For other cars, you're going to have to look it up. Um, if you're running a BMW, go ahead, just let your motor blow up and put in an LS because that crap is not worth doing anyways. So if we go over here, we're going to look at my oil pan. And as you can see, there's two holes here. One's an inlet and one's an outlet. My oil filter is going to screw in right there. And, um, I do actually have a sandwich plate which is right here. It just works a little bit differently, but as you can see, there's my oil pressure switch, um, or that's my oil pressure sensor right there, and my two 10 AN lines, which I'll be splicing into the uh, return line, and as you can see right here, inlet and outlet. So this is what my sandwich plate looks like. This is specifically for the LS engine. Um, your sandwich plate's gonna look a little bit differently because most of the time, if you don't have these lines, it's going to actually go onto the surface um, right above your actual oil filter. Another thing you're going to want to look at while you're um, doing things to save your engine from uh, getting started with oil is a baffled oil pan. So that's the old oil pan baffle. This is the new one with the trap doors in it. Um, this is from Improved Racing, and this is specifically built for the LS Camaro oil pan like I have here. So um, this thing literally bolts down directly into there and replaces that piece, which I've already taken out. Um, the only reason I haven't put it in yet is because I still have bits of my old motor in there and I need to go and get that washed out. All right, folks, we're almost done putting in the AccuSump setup. Um, just like I said before, it's a really simple concept once you see how it's done. Um, so this is where we are so far. Um, right now, we've got the AccuSump reservoir right behind the driver's seat. Uh, this is not mounted down right now. I have to figure out some kind of a bracket to mount this uh, to its location where it is right now. But this is where it's going to sit. I've got my AN fitting running from there to my um, shutoff valve or my activation valve, whatever you want to call it. Um, remember, like I said, this is a remote valve setup. Normally, your valve would go on the canister itself. 
but I wanted to move it. Um, take a second to admire my very ugly bracket that took me about three days to make. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I'll be able to activate the valve from right here. I think this is the, uh, what is this? This is the on position and the off position is going to look like that. I'm a little bit worried that the place that I put it in is going to interfere with my transmission when it's in second gear, but we'll deal with that bridge when we cross it. Um, you know, obviously I can only do so much right now and I'm still trying to get work done on the car. So from there, we cut down 90 degrees into the carpet and we actually go through a hole that I made in the transmission tunnel and it goes out to the engine bay right there. So coming out of the transmission tunnel, I should have plenty of clearance there. Um, and I have to account for that when I match these lines up. But since I don't have a motor right now, um, that doesn't necessarily affect the install, but it makes it very difficult for me to run the lines in places where they won't interfere with other things. But I have a general idea of how everything should fit. Um, you know, worst case scenario, I could always pull this stuff back out and move things around a little bit. I am going to give myself a little bit of slack in this line here. I've got tons of line, um, you know, in case I have to move anything around. But this right here is what matters. My oil pan, as you can see, I've got my baffles in there now. Um, and my sandwich plate, like I showed you guys, is going to mount to the side of the oil pan. Um, roughly in this area right here, just like you see it. And on the sandwich plate, they make it nice and easy for you. They say it says in and out. So obviously the in is your return side that goes back to, um, I don't know, to wherever it goes. It, I don't think it goes into your oil pan, but the return side is the side that goes back towards the motor. So that's the line that we're gonna be tapping into. So based on what everything looks like right here, I think I'm going to cut in this area here because I know I'm not gonna be interfering with anything. Um, it's gonna be clear of the headers. Um, you know, everything in this area is pretty tight, especially with the headers. Um, up here, I think, is a good area for me to splice into. So we're gonna go ahead, tape this, cut it, and we're going to insert our piece that, oh, there it is. We're gonna insert this piece. So the existing line is gonna pass through here, obviously and the new line is going to tee in right here. All right, folks, so the AccuSump install is just about done. I've got the oil cooler sitting in uh, just about the location where it normally would sit, um, exactly how it sits. So basically the flow of the oil, as you can see, these two lines are my oil cooler lines and the oil is gonna flow from the engine all the way up through the top. It's gonna go down through the cooler and then it's gonna return to the motor because this is the return line. Um, as you can see, it goes back through here, and the normal route is going to be straight back to the oil pan slash oil filter. Um, as you can see here, we've got the AccuSump teed in, and I'll show you that route one more time. Um, also, as you can see, is I opted not to install the check valve. Um, you know, there's always a debate between going with manufacturer setup uh, recommendations and what's tried and true and based on other folks who have done this before me the tried and true way to do this is to install this without the check valve so you know it was a hard decision to make but i decided to go with the folks that are driving around without blown motors right now versus something that should work in theory so i did not install the check valve obviously what you're going to do with the check valves you're going to install it you can do this end or this end but it needs to be facing the direction of the flow which is that way on the return line and that's going to return to the oil pan. So, um, once again, we've got our AccuSump line teed in here. That goes in through the firewall. It comes into the car to our valve, which we can switch on and off. Um, once the valve is on, 
it allows the AccuSump canister to equalize the pressure between the canister and the engine oil pressure. Um, and of course, the canister sits right behind the seat with just one line. So that's about it. All right, folks, that's about it for this install. Thanks for watching. I hope this wasn't too confusing. I hope I was able to make it nice and simple for you guys who may have watched other videos on how to get this done. Um, like I said, I know I put a lot of details in here that I wasn't able to find in other videos that made this thing look oversimplified. Even though it is a very simple install, a lot of things do get left out in the other videos. So um, I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, definitely leave any questions for me down below. Um, I do my best to answer every uh, comment that you guys leave on my videos, um, but you know, YouTube is a little bit funky sometimes, and sometimes I can see the comments, but I can't actually get to where they are to reply to them. So I don't know, if, uh, if you ask me a question, I'm always gonna do my best to respond to it. So uh, if there's anything you don't understand, hit me up, I'll get back to you, and that's about it. Talk to you guys next time.